And Reese, it's a cold night in Rocky Top. We'll let you listen and let you warm up from Thompson Bowling Arena. It is Super Tuesday presented by KFC. A sold out crowd in Knoxville as we get set for the 206th meeting between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Volunteers of Tennessee. Welcome to Knoxville, everybody. I'm Brad Nesson with Jimmy Dykes. Janine will join us in just a minute. No top 25 teams in the SEC after Tennessee lost here last Wednesday night, Jimmy. Somebody's got to jump to the forefront. Most people think it'll be one of these two teams. I would agree with that. And forget about the fact that neither team is ranked right now because it's still, in this part of the country, Kentucky and Tennessee, two heavyweights, two teams expected to battle for the SEC championship. The question of this ball game, can Tennessee force turnovers against Kentucky, and can Kentucky handle the pressure in front of 20,000 people. Let's talk about some of the stars in this game, and there will be plenty as we take a look at our star watch, Jody Meeks and Tyler Smith. Jody Meeks, the fifth best scorer in the college basketball right now, Brad, and he is terrific at both ends of the floor, a guy that plays hard defensively and offensively, and Tyler Smith. I think he's really good in a lot of areas on the offensive end, but he is great at competing in close ball games. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First four. The visiting Wildcats of Kentucky. The aforementioned Jody Meeks with Michael Porter in the backcourt. Up front, some troublesome guys for Tennessee in the past have been Perry Stevenson and Patrick Patterson with Ramon Harris for Billy Gillespie. And for Bruce Pearl, here's how it looks. Bobby Mays, Scotty Hobson, J.P. Prince in the backcourt. And up front, Tyler Smith and Wayne Chisholm, who's coming off another big week. Let's check in. Third member of our broadcast team, Janine. It was a tough week for Tennessee after their loss last Wednesday. It sure was, Brad. Last Wednesday, the second longest home winning streak in the nation came to an end right here when Gonzaga beat Tennessee. Tyler Smith told me the team was devastated. He cried in the locker room as his first thought was, what would his recently deceased father have said? And then he thought about the fans. How will we face them? They've been so loyal. Well, Coach Pearl told them today, people are doubting us, but we control our destiny. Smith told me it's even simpler than that. We have to get better. They've still got a 16-game SEC home winning streak at stake. The last time they lost in a conference game here three years ago to Kentucky. And Bruce has got the orange on. He wears it for Kentucky and Vanderbilt. So we'll see it next Tuesday night on Super Tuesday from Nashville. Billy Gillespie in his second year. Co-SEC Coach of the Year after a rough start last season. Their second half was exceptional, and they ended up 12-4 and in conference play. Well, that's what they are right now, overall, 12-4. and They've won five of their last six league road openers, but this is their first conference road game. Out on the floor to help us out, Doug Shouse, John Cahill, and Tony Green has got the ball in hand. Tyler Smith told Janine that we simply have to get better. They have to get better defensively, Brad, starting tonight. They need an identity. This is a Tennessee ball club that is used to turning you over with a lot of pressure, and they have lacked that so far this year. Here's Tyler Smith, fakes the three. They work it around that Kentucky perimeter. It's like a big blue fence out there right now. Ten on the shot clock. Cross court pass leaves Smith momentarily open. Now trying to penetrate. Turn around jumper. Rebound. Chisholm underneath. Nice lead for Prince. Boy, great hand by both Chisholm and Prince because there's a fastball fired from about six feet away from Chisholm. Terrific look. And terrific catch. Underneath, Kentucky's got the answer. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The very first play defensively for Tennessee, Jody Meeks drives baseline on two bounces and gets to the rim. That's not good. Chisholm, in essence, that was a pass to Prince on the weak side, and J.P. Prince off to a good start. A big two for Kentucky, Jody Meeks and Patrick Patterson. Those are the two guys that the white jerseys have to lock in this ball game early. Here's Harris on top. Jody Meeks, Jimmy Metchin, the number five scorer in the country. Quarter for three, and Harris keeps it alive. So Kentucky gets a second shot clock. 
Yeah, Kentucky pretty simple in their offense. A lot of three around two, a high low. And right now is the bread and butter. Patrick Patterson on the block. Harrison trying to feed it down low and did to Patterson. Nice lead inside for Patrick Patterson on the extra pass. He is a warrior inside. He understands the butt post or the rear end post as well as you can teach in college basketball right now. And likewise, Tennessee keeps it alive with the offensive rebound. Kentucky very content, Brad, in this ballgame to let Tennessee play pass around the perimeter. Ooh, tough pass inside, double dribble called on Wayne Chisholm. Talk about Patrick Patterson, look at him, get that big badonky donk right in the front of Chisholm <laughs> early in this ballgame. But that's the strength of him is his backside just pounds on you for 40 minutes. It's something that Tennessee has to have an answer for. Inbounds play, Tennessee so good at defending. The inbound, knocking it back out of bounds. I think a key tonight also, talking about Patterson and his size and length, is Wayne Chisholm not getting in foul trouble. Because without him on the inside, Tennessee doesn't have much. Good job to inbounds that basketball in the lane area. That way you take away those sidelines and that baseline has helped defenders. Trying to get it into Patterson again. Nice job fronting him by Chisholm. Meeks jumper from long range, way off the mark. And we're going to come off to Bobby Mays. Trying to get it to Chisholm. Tough catch, and he made it. Great pass by Mays in traffic. Chisholm gathered it, and Tennessee by two again. What a luxury to have a 6'9 guy to get out and lead the break for you because Kentucky had their defensive balance set, but a 6'9 guy over the top, no answer for it. Now trying to get a turnover in the front court, and Stevenson almost lost the handle. Thompson on Meeks, 10 on the Kentucky clock. Meeks from three, got it. Never even moved the net. Boy, what a score he's become compared to his first two seasons. You know, and Brad, he seldom guards himself. He's a guy that's in constant motion. He understands different speeds, getting himself open. And you do not let him rhythm dribble into a three like he just did. That was Jody's 58th three-pointer of the year. Hobson comes up way short, and Meeks will pull down the air ball. Be interesting to see if they get it in his hands again for a little heat check. He came around a pick, but they get it to Patterson instead. His hook shot, he's fouled in the lane. And it's Chisholm with a foul. Talk about Jody Meeks. Look at him right here. Just rhythm dribble into a three. All those dribbles were. He only covered about six or seven feet, but he was getting his rhythm and measuring the rim the entire time. His eyes were locked in on the rim, Brad, as he was dribbling that basketball, telling the defender, I'm getting ready to stick it on you if you don't challenge me. Patrick Patterson is 79% free throw shooter. Rattle that one around for his third points. Patterson got in foul trouble the other day in the game against Georgia and sat out the first 10 minutes of the first half with two fouls. He's giving Kentucky here a two-point lead. He gets fouled a lot and he converts at a 78% ratio, so he's a very good free throw shooter. Last tab in the lineup for Tennessee. Kentucky not afraid of Tennessee's ability to knock down threes. All those blue jerseys are inside that three-point line. Cameron Tatum had a big night from outside the arc last Wednesday against Gonzaga. Career-high night for him. Seven here on the shot clock. Tyler Smith will try three. Tipped in by Brian Williams. Nice job by the big guy positioning himself to tie the game at eight. And the best offense for Tennessee early now has been a missed opportunity, and they're climbing on the offensive glass. And a bump either by Tatum or Tad. It's going to be on Josh Tad. 15-31 remaining first half. Good game so far. Tied at eight. All right, Reese here. We're tied at eight. 15-31 remaining in the first half on our Super Tuesday presented by KFC. 
Tennessee's caused so many turnovers over the years since Bruce Pearl got here, Jimmy. And you're going to show us where you don't want to get them. Well, in this red area tonight, that, that's an area that is not acceptable if you're Kentucky. You cannot turn the ball over in the backcourt in that area of this ballgame tonight because you can't get your defense set. The next zone we're going to chart is those will be bad turnovers tonight. Just as you cross half court, that's still a bad area because it gives Tennessee Brad a chance to get run outs and get easy two points. If there is such thing as an okay turnover for Kentucky tonight, it will be in this part of the floor from the top of the three-point line towards the baseline going towards the rim. If they turn it over in the green area tonight, at least it gives Kentucky a chance to run and get their defense set. So we've got not acceptable areas, bad turnovers, and okay turnovers for Kentucky tonight that we're going to chart. They've really been better, as you saw in the last few games, than they were earlier in the season as far as turnovers are concerned. Here's Stevenson. Galloway's checked into the lineup. And Galloway, Jr., for the first time. Ryan Williams cuts off Harris. Well, Patterson just continues to pound inside. He will post and repost and post again. Prince pulls off Patterson's miss. Prince thought about a three, and you can hear the crowd gasp. He's not a good three-point shooter. <laughs> That's pretty bad when your own, when your your own, own crowd is going, no. <laughs> Here's Williams. Quadruple team. Ball comes free, and Tatum for a triple. Got it. That's what he was doing the other night when he had a career-high 22 against Gonzaga. And he's given Tennessee a three-point edge. And Brad, for a young kid, a shooter, very important for the first one to go down. He can go one for 10 or five for 10, depending on how he gets started. Drive Harris over everybody. Prince pulls it out of midair. On a runner, in and out. On the other end. Back comes Kentucky. Meeks just flying by everybody. And the easy pass to Ramon Harris. I think Jody Meeks really has a complete game. Uh, Kentucky's not ranked in the top 25. They're off the national radar. But you look at this kid's game and his numbers, how hard he plays defensively. He affects the entire ball game, Brad, as Tyler Smith goes out, kind of like James Harden does out at Arizona State, talking about Jody Meeks. He's that good. He just had a good example just blowing by people. He's been banged up last year. He missed a lot of games due to injury. Had a cracked pelvic bone that kept him out of a lot of games at the end of the season. And his speed is back. He looks more like the guy that was the Georgia player of the year three seasons ago. We'll have to keep our eye on Tyler Smith, who banged his knee up here last Wednesday and then played through the pain against Georgia. I don't know if that's the problem right now on the bench, but he is in some pain. Chisholm up and good and one. Wayne Chisholm just fought his way for that basket. Ramon Harris picks up the foul. Good job by Chisholm to walk his man up the floor. And because he walked his man up the floor, he was in the receiving position. And I think if Tennessee's going to hang in that top 20 to 25 all season long, he has to take those numbers and become a 18-point, 10 or 11 rebound guy every night. He's a difference maker. I tell you, the difference in him shooting free throws from the past two years has been phenomenal. Well, he doesn't get that one, but it's tipped in by Brian Williams. They'll take that one for two anytime. Brad, that's three or four offensive putbacks by Tennessee the first seven minutes of this ball game. That is a concern for Billy Gillespie on that sidelines right now. Two of them by the big guy, Brian Williams. And he's giving his team a five-point lead. Meeks, fadeaway jumper. Got it. Wow. Looks like a different guy from a year ago. Tatum can't answer with a three, but it's kept momentarily alive by Tennessee, and then they lose the ball. Shoulder thrown in, offensive foul on Harris. That's Harris second. Tomorrow night, a couple ACC schools getting together in Atlanta. Duke on the road to take out the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Wednesday night hoops presented by Disney Parks, 7 o'clock tomorrow night in Atlanta.
I know this, Georgia Tech better bring all the offense they have and then some because they're up against the number one ranked defensive team in the country. When you look at the defensive efficiency ratings on the, the Ken Palm, the different stats that are out there right now, that's how good Duke is defensively right now, just ahead of Louisville, Memphis, and West Virginia. Georgia Tech still trying to get an identity, I think would be the word I'd use. I don't know what Paul Hewitt would call it, but watching them and their losses to Virginia and Maryland, they're lacking something. They could use an outside shooter, that's for sure, and they really don't have one right now that's been very warm. There's a warm one for Scotty Hobson for three. Scotty Hobson, a guy that was recruited to take the starting guard vacated by Chris Lofton. He is not a Chris Lofton type shooter, but he's starting to grow in his confidence. And Kentucky will have to adjust their defense. Billy Gillespie started this game off by backing his defense off. Now he's going to have to crowd a little bit more on those perimeter shooters. That's Tony Green and Doug Shaw's looking at the replay to make sure that that was a three pointer and not a two. So the guys and Gerald Boudreau, head of officials of the SEC, right behind him there, having a having a look of what we saw and what our truck can give them. Oh, that's a three. It'll be his 18th of the year if they indeed call it a three. All right, Tony, what do you got? That's a three. Thanks, guys. Remember, you don't watch a lot of college basketball. It's not where you land. It's where you take off from. And clearly both sneakers behind the arc. He had it about 20 feet 9 and a quarter inches. Yeah, he did. On takeoff. Now, Brad, Kentucky has not turned the basketball over yet against Tennessee. And they're already down in this ball game. And Tennessee, where you see they're going to crowd that baseline. They will crowd that baseline as long as the officials let them do it and really put pressure on you. The shot clock was not reset. Now they've got it. Back to 35. Brad, watch those Tennessee guys that are on the ball right now. They will crowd that line right there as much as the officials will let them get away with, just like any good pressing team does. And the rule says you cannot break that plane, but Tennessee will push that rule to the limit, and I love how they go about it. This is about the best I've seen them do it, and I think this is the fifth time I've seen them in person this year. So maybe they're finally starting to get it. Bruce Pearl is hoping so, I know that. Yeah. Meeks against Mays. Stevenson ran out of real estate. Darius Miller, a highly touted freshman. Here he is on the move. Got in the air and had to drop it off to Stevenson. Now Porter outside for three and he got it. Yeah, he's not known as a great shooter, but watching him against Vanderbilt in the last couple of ball games, he will stick a timely three-point shot on you in late clock situations. He did it against Vanderbilt in the first half, and he just did it against Tennessee. That's only his 11th three of the year. Jimmy said not big on that outside shot, but timely again in this case to cut it to two. Tennessee in their version of the flex offense. This is how Bruce Pearl gets controlled over chaos on the offensive end. He slows his kids down and puts them in that flex offense. Shortens the clock. Bobby Mays, nice penetration off the glass. <laughs> Terrific use, Brad, of Bobby Mays out top on that on-ball screen. He didn't go too early, he didn't go too late, and the driving lane was created because of it. He's done a nice job in the last two or three games of hanging in the air with that little side, almost a hook shot off the glass. When he penetrates, that opens up some other things for the Volunteers. Here's Porter. Same kind of move, only straight in with the right hand off the left side. Five for Porter in a row. Tennessee is really pressuring defensively, probably as good as they have all year. And Kentucky now is starting to do a lot of stuff off the back cut and the back dribble. Ryan Williams is going to be called for an offensive foul. Bobby Mays, little body control. Looks like Jimmy Joe Dykes here. <laughs> Off the glass. A lot quicker and a lot better. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs>
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by KFC. It's a flavor blitz. KFC's honey barbecue wings have three layers of flavor. And in part by Lincoln and the technologically breathtaking 2009 Lincoln MKS. Lincoln, reach higher. Well, while the men's teams won a lot of games since Bruce Pearl got here, the women's team has won millions of games, it seems, under Pat Summit. When you look at most career coaching wins, 995, and that's just comparing her to some guys uh, in other sports, some coaches in other sports, including John Gallardi of St. John's in football, Mason in hockey, Gillespie in baseball, and Closing in on that magical thousand. That's just unbelievable. There's so many banners in here that you can't even see the rafters, and they're mostly the women's either SEC tournament championships or, in Pat's case, eight national championships on Summit Courts. Right about four or five years ago, she and I were covering the WNBA playoffs for ESPN, so I got to spend about six or seven days with her. And she's one of those coaches you could say, Coach Summit, this, this year we need you to coach our softball team. Yeah. <laughs> they would win. They would win in hockey. They would win in baseball. You put her in football, she'd get a staff around her, and they would win. She can, If you can coach, you can coach, and she can coach. She can definitely coach. Hopefully Pat's going to join us sometime during the game tonight here on our Super Tuesday. It's been a good one so far between Kentucky and Tennessee. Almost the midway point of the first half. For the most part, it's been Tennessee in front by a couple most of the way so far. Lob to Patterson. And a nice help on the baseline by Mays, who almost got the steal. And instead, he gives it back to Kentucky. Now, if it did not change, it did change possession. So the shot clock goes to 35. That's what the officials were conferring about. Bobby Mays got enough of a handle on it to turn it over. So it's a fresh shot clock for Kentucky. Jody Meeks, I mean, if you'd have watched him in the last two years, you never would have believed he could be this good a shooter. Reggie you can't let him measure the rim. Tennessee relaxed for about a half of a second, and Jody Meeks got an opening and stuck it on him again. And he's a kid that you have to just check his breath the entire time he has it now. Tyler Smith somehow got an offensive rebound. Kick out to Hobson for three. Way short. Patterson will clear it off. But very important, Kentucky only one turnover so far in this ball game. Billy Gillespie could not have drawn up any better as far as the turnovers in this building to start. Nice steal by Chisholm denying the inbounds pass, but he throws it right back away, trying to get it to J.P. Prince. Let's check in with Janine. Well, Brad, Coach Bruce Pearl told me today that he took a slightly different approach in practice. He said this is a very big game. He wanted to keep his guys loose, though. He wanted to keep things light. He didn't want them tight for this game. He said that leads to mistakes. He told me he's very happy with his team's effort level, but he spent a lot of time this afternoon nailing down the intricacies of sets and execution. He said the main thing tonight, make guys other than Meeks and Patterson beat us. Well, Meeks so far is doing a good job. He's got 10, but Patterson only has three. Nice catch by Tyler Smith underneath, maybe too far underneath. Tyler has yet to score. And he's the leading scorer for the Volunteers. Here comes Jody Meeks on that bull rush from one side of the floor to the other. He might have been too close on that shot. Yeah. And on the rebound, it's going to be a foul on Tennessee, and it's on Tyler Smith. Brad, Kentucky now has two turnovers in this ball game. But both turnovers have come in the OK area of the floor tonight, that three-point line and in, because it has allowed Kentucky to get their defense set. So, so important when you play the balls in this building. A.J. Stewart in for Kentucky, along with Harris and Meeks. Going to have to hurry to get it into anybody. Porter did get it in and got it right back on the baseline. Patterson looks over to Coach Gillespie, and now Meeks one-on-one -on -one with Tyler Smith. Going to try Tyler Smith on Meeks. See if he can keep him from scoring. Well, he's going to go around a pick and score anyway, right over Chisholm. Well, that didn't work. Worked for a second. Yeah. You, you have to make an adjustment 
and I'm not talking about Bruce Pearl. He went over this time and time again today in the shoot-around, how are we going to defend Jody Meeks? So right now, the kids of Tennessee, they have to decide, do we, do we, do we want to defend tonight, or do, do we want to let this guy come into our house and put a knot on her head? Because right now, Jody Meeks is doing it in all kinds of ways. But the separation that he's creating off the bounce and the separate separation that he's getting coming off of ball screens, watch. The screen is set, not a hard hedge. Chisholm gets lazy, and Meeks says, thank you very much. Jody Meeks just lighting it up five out of seven from the floor. First consecutive 30 point games at Kentucky since 89. He's got four 30 point games this year. Had a career high against Appalachian State. 46 he put up in that one. And now over the last six games, he's averaging 28 points a game. Now I saw this kid play in high school and I knew he could shoot, but with the injuries and the fact that he was a freshman two years ago, last year all kinds of injury problems as a sophomore. He missed 20 games. He only had 16 threes. What's he got, four tonight? Yeah. So <laughs> that tells you the difference a year can make when you're healthy. Brad, he takes a team high 16 shots a game, and maybe two or three a ball game would be a questionable or a bad shot. But Billy Gillespie lives with those because he plays so dadgum hard on the defensive end as well. He's earned the right to take a couple of bad shots a yeah. game. Good point. There's a follow by Stewart. Missed it. Chisholm. The scoop pass ahead to Bobby Mays. It's the biggest lead now for Kentucky, up by four. Let's see if Tennessee's got an answer. Chisholm and Tyler it. Smith in the lane, and they missed him. Chisholm will try a three. He can shoot from out there, but usually it's when they're trailing, and yep. he's the last guy down court. That's when he can hit him. Here's Meeks going up. He goes down, and his teammates help him out with the offensive rebound and the score. It's too easy. It's, it's too easy to allow Jody Meeks to get another freed up open look and then not clean up the miss. And now Tennessee turns it over. And that's not good news. Down by six. Wow. Jody Meeks is just putting on a show. Has great balance in his game, Brad. He, he'll take eight threes a game and he'll also take eight twos. That's terrific balance. He is not one dimensional at all. Bobby Mays will try to answer and does with a very timely three-pointer, and he hasn't hit too many of those this year. 6.59 to go, five-point game in the first half. Kentucky on a run courtesy of number 23, playing like a guy that should be wearing that jersey. Here's a kick ball. Bobby Mays trying to tell the officials that it was his knee, but it'll be Kentucky ball when we come out of this timeout. This guy is on fire, Jody Meeks. Junior out of Norcross, Georgia, putting on a show in Knoxville at Thompson Bowling Arena tonight. Reese Davis with you in the studio. Over on ESPN2 right now, Memphis and Tulsa in a one-point game. Memphis has the lead and won 44 straight games, including conference tournaments, against Conference USA competition. They are looking at that play with 15 seconds left to see exactly what happened when Tyreek Evans lost the handle on the way out, presumably looking to see whether uh, who's going to wind up with the basketball. 15 seconds to go over on ESPN2. Keep you up to date on that. Right now, take you back to Rocky Top, the Wildcats in the ball. All right, Reese, good one there. Keep us posted here. It's been quite a performance by Jody Meeks. He's got 16 of Kentucky's 28 points, and they lead by five. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow night, Kobe Bryant and the Lakers travel to San Antonio to take on Tim Duncan and the Spurs. See if the defending Western Conference champions can win a tough road contest, and that's a tough place to play. NBA Wednesday on ESPN and also on ESPN360.com. Brad, you look at Jody Meeks' start in this ball game, and shot chart here in front of me, we'll show later on, but he's taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shots. Five of them have been from the right side of the floor, four of them from the left side of the floor, and he's taken five threes and four twos. You can't have better balance as an offensive player than what his shot chart shows right now. Nobody else has done that much damage for Kentucky other than Meeks. They haven't had to, I guess, including this guy, Patterson. Harris dribble drive over Williams. He's going to go to the free throw line. It'll be Brian Williams' second foul. Coming out of that timeout, Bruce Pearl puts J.P. Prince on Jody Meeks. Prince is 
his best long arm defender at 6'6", and it looks like he might start face guarding Jody Meeks with J.P. Prince and just chasing him, caboosing him, locking him, trailing him all over the floor. But this kid's seen it all. Porter is going to check back in. Galloway goes out for Kentucky. Well, I got to wonder if Tyler Smith's knee is going to allow him to chase Jody Meeks around. Because defensively, he doesn't look as fast as normal. And J.P. Prince has had a bad ankle ever since the practice before the Temple game. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they got a guy healthy enough to chase Jody Meeks right yeah, now. That's a great point. They, they don't have one guy. So they're going to have to team guard him and switch out and communicate and make Jody Meeks do something where he has to work offensively in this game. But look how hard Jody Meeks works defensively. Here's Tyler on the offensive end. Tyler Smith to the three. That's his first basket. Coming off a 24-point, 11-rebound game in the win over Georgia. The other day, a big double-double. Without him, they had no chance to beat the Dogs, who had a big lead in the first half at Stagman Coliseum. But now that three-pointer makes it a three-point game. Tough shot by Stevenson. Rebound. Patterson tracks it down right in front of Bruce Pearl and the Tennessee bench. It'll be Kentucky ball. Check in with Janine. Well, as you guys mentioned, you know, Tyler Smith spent last Thursday and Friday on crutches with that deep bone bruise in his left knee, but he he did play um, on Saturday. Coach Pearl did not game plan to have him in the rotation. He begged to play. He had 24 points. Now, since Saturday, he told me the knee was very sore, and he's been taking treatments every day. In fact, yesterday, he had five hours of treatments. Pearl, Pearl called him a competitor and an inspiration to his teammates. Yeah, he played on guts over in Athens the other day, no doubt. And almost had a triple-double, in fact. And here's Jody Meeks bumped way out near midcourt, and that's something you don't want to do when you've got a shooter who's already hot. Brett, he understands everything about offensive basketball. Look at him attack the hip of Williams, the head's defender. Jody Meeks is a three-point shooter. He's a two-point scorer, but he knows how to operate with that basketball. He attacked that hip of the hedge defender and forced the officials to make a call. There's still one under the limit, so no free throws. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He just comes around the other side and knocks down his fifth three-pointer of the first half. It's almost like Tennessee was throwing a party in this building, and Jody Meeks came in and stole the remote control, plopped down on the couch, <laughs> drank all the Kool-Aid, and changed the station. You know, I mean, he's just doing anything he wants right now against Tennessee's defense. I'll tell you one thing. The school record for three-pointers is in serious jeopardy. He has it right now tied with Tony Delk at nine. He's got six already in this half. I beg your pardon, five in this half. But we got a lot of basketball left. Again, Tennessee is going to crowd that baseline. Billy Gillespie talked to his kids today about backing up, making sure you have a good view of the, of the floor. Bruce Pearl's a guy that's going to pressure you and pressure you and pressure you some more. And they do a nice job, and they get the steal. Williams missed a slam, but he's going to the free throw line. Good call, Jimmy. They did it to perfection. It's something that just scares you to death. Look at Williams at 6'10", crowding that baseline, taking away the vision of the passer, forcing a tough pass. And Bruce Pearl, he gets the foul call, but that's a good sign for his ball club, getting that press set on and the press being effective. So they turn it over, Brad, in the not acceptable part of the play. Right, exactly. Brian Williams. Not necessarily the guy you'd want at the free throw line, but he ripped that first one. Brian, a 59% free throw shooter, up from 50 a year ago. You know what I like about him? He gets one rebound every two and a half minutes he's on the floor. The best ratio that Tennessee has. He almost got his own miss there, and there was a cheap foul. I think it's going to be on Woolridge. It'll be his first. They're going to call in a Brian Williams, not on Woolrich. So that's not good news for the inside game of Tennessee. You know, I talked to Ben Halvin last night, the head coach of UCLA, for quite a while on the phone, and they put on a defensive clinic in their ballgame Sunday night against Southern Cal. 
held the Trojans, I think, nine points over the last ten minutes. And he said a couple of three things. Contain and pressure at the same time. Something that Tennessee has not been able to do in this ball game to Jody, Mate, to Jody Meeks. They great. pressured, but yep. they haven't but they contained. Have contained. Yeah. Then you also have to have great help, something that Tennessee has not done. And, boy, you talk about the best defensive possession I've seen all year. UCLA put on Southern Cal under a minute to go and just blanketed the Trojans for 35 seconds to win that ball game. Jody Meeks has got 21 points. Wow. Not like, not like putting a good shooter on the free throw line just to give him a couple more strokes, right? And the lead goes back to seven. Kentucky will full body help. They don't just half help, they full body it. That's not the shot they're looking for. I don't think Woolridge kept alive though by Tab. We've got to drive that ball. Right now, it's just catch around the horn. You have to drive that ball to that SEC part on the floor and make Kentucky respond to it. Tyler Smith backs up and tries a three. Rebound off to Ramon Harris. Great defense by Kentucky. They take a 25% three-point shooter and bait him in to taking a shot. Well, he has hit one tonight. That's the only basket he's made so far. Bull Ridge. Galloway, Galloway trying to backcourt. One-handed pass to Jody Meeks, and Jody says, you know what, I had him. You should have lobbed it to me up high yes. instead of throwing it down to my ankles. Great call because it's a it's a tough pass when you try to bounce it through there, but it's an alley-oop waiting to happen, partner, like you said, if you throw it to the right side of the rim. Stevenson goes out, and A.J. Stewart comes back in. Uh -oh. Patterson, oh, I was just going to say they've done a nice job on him, and that was just a little bit of a brain lock there, thinking that he was going to throw it back to the baseline and leaving him alone in a one-hand condor slam dunk by Patterson. What a great read by Patrick Patterson. As soon as his defender bit on the bait, he attacked. And Meeks picks up the foul on the other end. Brad, here's the problem. Jody Meeks is so good offensively, he's getting all kinds of attention. Watch Jody Meeks. He throws it in bounds and then goes to the corner, and they forget about the second best score for Kentucky right now. Tulsa should have their football team out there. They could have scored more than that. <laughs> You're right. Kentucky here, 36 to 27. And Jody Meeks has put on a show for the Wildcats in the first half. Meeks and Patterson, the two guys you have to watch out for, Janine, that's for sure. Oh, you got that right. You know, the Lexington Herald leader is running a fan poll right now in the paper. They want fans to vote on a nickname for them. Right now, the leader, believe it or not, is Rhythm and Bruise with 53% <laughs> of the voting. I asked Jody Meeks about it. He didn't even know about the poll. He thinks a better nickname would be Shock and Awe. Ooh. And boy, is he doing that tonight. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> shock and Awe. Now, those two guys average a little over 43 points between the two of them. So whatever you call it, here's the awe end of it, I guess. I don't know which one's which, but he missed in close. I like Rhythm and Bruise, man. Yeah, I do, That's too. a little flair to it also. Yeah. And right now they're putting a bruise on Tennessee with 3.15 remaining in the first half. Nice feed inside of Chisholm, and he'll go to the free throw line. Fouls on Harris, and that is his third, so that'll sit him down the remainder of this first half, I assume. Billy Gillespie's going to go to the free throw line. Wayne Chisholm will step up. Four points for Wayne tonight. Always important to make free throws, but especially for Tennessee. And he got one of two, uh, the first one. There's Mike Pratt. Mike, back in the day, scored 19 a game, and Dan Issel scored 34 a game. They were the most prolific scoring tandem up until now with Jody Meeks and Patrick Patterson. So Mike's over there doing the radio with Tom Leach. 
He did his job almost 20 a game. Issel 34 a game. So 53 wow. and a half between those two, whereas these two guys, Rhythm and Bruce, or Shock and Awe, whatever you want to call them, about 43 points a game. 34 and 19. That ain't bad, is wow. it? Wow. That was back in 69-70. That's a tad better than Joe Klein and I, our senior year, averaging 24 between us. Yeah. What did Joe have? 23. <laughs> there, there's the guys we're talking about, and there's the most combined, combined points since Dan and Mike. Mike does a great job with Tom over on radio. And he and I worked together back in the day on TV a few games. Three Kentucky. minutes remaining in the half. Eight-point ball game. We're at Kentucky, only one turnover now in the not acceptable part of this floor. That's another reason why they have this lead. Well, there is in the acceptable end of the floor they turn it over. Chisholm. I don't know, that might have been one too many passes by Bobby Mays. And now here comes Jody Meeks the other way against Prince. All the way and off the glass and one. Prince picks up the foul. Meeks will go to the free throw line with a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Brad, there are a lot of things that I love about Jody Meeks' offensive game. One of the things that he really understands well is he never he does not go off of one foot in traffic. Boom, watch right there. He gets both feet on the ground and then explodes up. You won't see him take a finesse, one-footed jump shot in front of the rim type move. He's going to power you, boom, with that two-footed jump stop time after time after time again. So a chance for a three-point play. Bruce Pearl talking with John Cahill. And Meeks, not just a good free throw shooter, a great free throw shooter. 90%, two for two tonight. And he rips it, three point play. And the biggest lead of the night as it swells to double digits now. Brad, he has hung his average on Tennessee in the first half in the first of the ball half. Game. That is unbelievable, isn't it? You talk about wanting to challenge a team defensively at halftime. You know Bruce Pearl has the ammo to do it. There's what Tennessee needs to do more of, but I'm not sure Tyler Smith got the jump in that knee that he normally has. He just went straight to the rack, got his second field goal. Now Prince trying to stay with Miller. And going to have a foul on Kentucky. Offensive foul on Miller. That'll be his second. Don't forget tomorrow night. Number two, Duke hits the road. Alexander Memorial Coliseum will take on the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Wednesday Night Hoops presented by Disney Parks. 7 o'clock tomorrow night from Atlanta. I'll be there with Jay Billis to bring you that one. Jimmy's heading north to get even colder than we are here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go in the studio tomorrow night. And then I'll meet you in Colorado, I guess, huh? on Saturday. See the Jayhawks. I'll first look at the Jayhawks this year. Nice hustle by Tennessee defensively. You know, I was on with ESPN News before our broadcast, and they asked me about Jody Meeks and where he fits in in the national picture. And why is he not in the conversation for National Player of the Year? He's the number five scorer. He's a terrific defender. He's a guy that just does, affects the area in so many ways, a lot like James Harden at Arizona State. But because they're not ranked, they're off the radar, he's not even in the conversation. Well, the only guy that I've seen come close to doing what he's doing to Tennessee was Deontay Christmas of Temple, who lit him up for, I believe, 30 of his 35 were in the second half. But most of that was from uh, long range in just about the same spot on the floor, the three-point line outside the left wing. Here, Jody Meeks has done it, as you said, Jimmy, from every place. Yep. Billy Gillespie just got a warning. Maybe just an accumulation of stuff. <laughs> the officials can do that. Just, just too much stuff. Yeah. Coach, that's enough. Yeah. I think that's what John Cahill told Bruce Pearl the last trip down to. I think they've listened to both of them enough here in the first half. Here comes the press, Brad. And they cut the lead back to seven. But Meeks got free from Tatum. And now he's going around Mays, but it's a two hand touch foul as Bobby Mays. I guess on the blow by by Jody Meeks, you could say, got both hands on it. That's an automatic foul. Well, Mays is going to weigh in about 170 pounds, and Jody Meeks built like a pretty good sized defensive back at 6'3 and close to 200. 
Yeah, you just saw both hands on him. Yeah. And they call that one right away. There's no hesitation. No, it's automatic. Wow. Been almost perfect. Jody on his way to his fifth 30 plus point game. I think it's safe to say that uh, if he just doesn't come out of the locker room in the second half, he's going to have that and then some. Right. Five straight free throws. Five threes in the first half. And his team in front by nine. Meeks, in my opinion, is a prototypical NBA two guard with his size of 6'4 and everything he can do. Tyler Smith in the lane, hangs and delivers. Wayne Chisholm lost the handle on that ball and wisely, just in hustling, tipped it to number one and Tyler Smith did the rest. Well, Tennessee would love a stop on this end here with a minute remaining in the half. They just got it. Offensive foul on Galloway. So Galloway and Liggins, both freshmen, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, on the perimeter. They play too up and down. They play too tall with the basketball. They've got to get low and understand that defense is going to try to take angles away from you. That was a terrific defensive play by Tennessee and an important one right before the half. And now comes the important offensive possession that follows it. So they try to get it to Tyler Smith, maybe with some penetration or run Tatum around a pick. The only problem with that is he's got Jody Meeks on it defensively. And here he is on the outside. Good hard hit by Patterson to take away that look by Tatum. Oh, Prince got in a double team and got sandwiched and got fouled on Perry Stevenson. So J.P. Prince will go to the free throw line. J.P. out of Memphis. Speaking of Memphis, as Reese was earlier, former 3A Mr. Basketball. Tayshawn Prince's cousin. Tayshawn, of course, was a star with Kentucky. And is in the NBA. And in this case, J.P. misses the free throw. And now there's about a second difference, basically, on the shot clock in the game time. Did you see where J.P. Prince was lined up for that free throw, Brad? Off uh, center? Yeah, well, he might get Hawk a steal guy. here, and that'll help. Tyler Smith, big three. And he got the roll. Wow, did Tennessee need that in the final 10 seconds? Now they can hold Kentucky before halftime to another bucket. I don't know if Kentucky knows how much time's left. Meeks, forces, and it almost went as almost everything else has. But the Wildcats, some of their front court guys weren't aware that the time was winding down to end the half. And as it is, four point game, almost miraculously, that Kentucky cut the lead to 41 to 37. Billy Gillespie's team's got the lead. He's with Janine. Coach Jody Meeks has been slicing into this Tenney defense with precision. How and why has he been able to do that so effectively? I couldn't hear your question. I'm sorry. Jody Meeks has been slicing into this Tennessee defense so effectively with precision. How and why has he been able to do that? He's a good player. He's hard to guard from the perimeter because he shoots it so well. So you have to press up on him, and after you do that, then he's able to get to the basket some. Why have you guys been able to handle Tennessee's press so well thus far? You've only got seven turnovers. Uh, seven turnovers is too many. We just gave away too many of them, but uh, they, they have good pressure. You have to look at it after the course of the game, not at, not at halftime. It doesn't really matter a whole lot now. All right, we'll see you second half. 41-37. Tennessee's got to be happy with it. They were down 11 at one point, but they put on a big run, and they trail by four at the break as we head to the UPS Halftime Report. Reese, Hubert, and Jay. Come on. All right, Brad. Wow. What a first-half performance by Jody Meeks. My goodness, he's having an All-American caliber season, but, but you really like the way that Kentucky's playing on the other end of the court, Jay. I do. Kentucky's playing really good defense. They, they had... Um, Tyler Smith was 2 of 7 until the last couple minutes. Now he's obviously 4 of 12, has 12 points. But the thing I like about them for Kentucky so far, they limited their turnovers. They only have seven turnovers. And just like Coach said, they were averaging 25 turnovers on the road this year. So seven turnovers in the first half is a good thing for them. And obviously, Meeks is playing great basketball, and they're doing a good job of taking care of the ball. Well, Kentucky's doing a better job than at the beginning of the year. Reese, you know, we saw them against North Carolina. Not only turnovers, they couldn't even bring up the ball up the floor. So having seven turnovers in the first half 
half is terrific. Jody Meeks has been outstanding. He's averaging 24 points a game. He has 26 in the first half, five threes. He, I mean, he's a complete basketball player. He can shoot from three. He can put the ball on the floor. He's an outstanding defender. He's having an All-American year. But somebody else is going to have to step up unless he's going to score 52 for the game uh, offensively for Kentucky. Based on what I saw in the first <laughs> he, half. He I'm might be sure able to do it. Get, I'm not sure anybody's planning <laughs> Somebody's to Somebody's got to stop. <laughs> I mean, he was going all Dan Issel on the people in the okay. first half. A great performance by Meeks, but Tennessee drawing closer at the break, 41-37. Still to come on the UPS Halftime Report, the best finish of the night keeps a big streak alive for Memphis. Wait till you see what happened in Tulsa. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by American Chemistry, essential to living. Learn more at AmericanChemistry.com and Pacific Life for insurance, annuities, and investments. Super Tuesday presented by KFC at Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. Certainly a super half in the first half for Jody Meeks. Jimmy Dykes, we have not seen anything better than what Jody showed us in the first 20 minutes. Not at all. I, I know it is written that the Meek shall inherit the earth. And Jody <laughs> Meeks has taken that to a whole other level exactly. so far in this first half in Tennessee. They better start climbing all into this guy, Brad, because he has done it in multiple ways. His shot distribution has been terrific with a balance on the right side, the left side of the floor. So it's not enough to just challenge his shots right now. Tennessee has challenged his shots, but you have to make Jody Meeks do something else right now in this basketball game, or he could hang 40 on you. And he has done that already this year. His career high is 46. But Tennessee, a nice late run to end that first half. Tyler Smith scored their last nine points for the Vols. He's the leading scorer. So our star watch that we talked about has come to fruition, that's for sure. Jody Meeks and Tyler Smith, and they'll need a lot more of Tyler Smith and a lot more of guarding number 23, as Jimmy said, if Tennessee's to not have their SEC home winning streak snapped after having their overall home winning streak snapped last Wednesday by Gonzaga. On the floor, Bobby Mays, J.P. Prince, Wayne Chisholm, Tyler Smith, and Scotty Hobson. It's Porter, Stevenson, Meeks, Patterson, and Harris for Kentucky. Opening possession of the second half and 15 on the shot clock for the Cats. Down to seven. Now they really want to play defense on number 23. Big crossover dribble and jumper goes. All that work, and that's what it got him. Doesn't he play with a great pace in this ballgame, Brad? Tennessee really? cannot speed him up. Even in a late clock situation, he played to the pace that he wants to play to. He had that crossover dribble, and then he almost stumbled and then just gathered himself and said, okay, I still got about three seconds left. I can hit this. Chisholm, nice catch underneath. And a good pass from J.P. Briggs. How about the NBA scouts that stopped you and I at halftime and said, hey, does Jody Meeks always play this good? <laughs> yeah. Pete, Pete Babcock, for one, said, he was hearing the Kentucky guys behind him saying what a great kid he is, that he is. Good student, good kid to be around, and a heck of a basketball player as you've seen through 20 minutes. Patterson from the elbow. Rebound, Hobson. The good Chance news to cut it down to two. And it's goaltending on Patterson. And look out. Basket pad came right off with Wayne Chisholm. He almost ended up on Patterson's shoulder. Brad, that's twice now in this game that Chisholm has run the length of the floor to be there to finish off the break. And the good news for Tennessee, although they're behind, they have taken Patrick Patterson out of this ball game offensively. Wayne kind of looked at that pad as if to say, I thought these things were hooked on. Well, shouldn't they be on tighter than that? A little bit. Kentucky had eight turnovers, Brad, in the first half, but only one of them were in the unacceptable part of the floor. Whistle and foul inside. Let's check in with Janine. Well, Brad, I talked to Coach Pearl, who told me Jody Meeks is just playing phenomenally. He said, we've tried to get him make look at contested shots. He's made those. We've tried to trap him. He gets out of that. He said, I'm going to try J.P. Prince on him for this set. And he said, I'm telling my guys at halftime, see it, steal it, and take charges when you have to. Uh, they tried to take one, and it still went in. Chisholm tried to take the charge. Meeks went over the top of him, and it's 30 for the fifth time this year for Jody Meeks. Tip underneath. Second tip still won't go. 
And now Kentucky controls the board. Pulled out of there by Perry Stevenson. Brad, really, there's no sign of Jody Meeks letting up. Uh, still not, no. How can a guy that has already hung 30 on you get that wide open in transition? Bruce Pearl will ask the exact same question tomorrow or maybe later tonight in the film session. Wayne Chisholm had cut this lead to a deuce. Now it's up to seven. It's about to be nine. And there might be time for a timeout for Tennessee. Down nine. Bruce Pearl's going to let them play. See if they can work their way out of it. Crowd is stunned by watching Jody Meeks. Tyler Smith thought about a three. And now Mays is going to take one. Rebound Kentucky. Harris pulls it down. Brad, great defense by Kentucky. They, they full body helped a couple of times and then forced Tennessee to fire up a three from Bobby Mays. You can't defend any better than Kentucky has done in this ball game multiple times. Porter has it knocked away from behind by Prince. It'll still be Kentucky ball. Well, Jody Meeks. I mean, look at this. There's not a guy within 10, a 10-foot 10 arc from Jody Meeks in transition. This is a guy that sprints ahead in transition because he knows he's a catch-and-shoot threat. That was just unacceptable defense by Tennessee. He just joined, I guess, Jody Meeks has 33 points and going for more and getting wow. more. He is just lighting it up. Seven threes for Meeks, 36 for the game. Are you kidding me? Oh. I mean, he is just catch, release. The release is the same way every time. Okay, I take back what I said about Deontay Christmas and Temple. Jody Meeks has just outdone him. Nice reverse layup by Wayne Chisholm. Chisholm has all six of Tennessee's points in his half. He's trying to keep them in it here. Brad, five different guys this, this year have a career high in points against Tennessee. That's not good. No, that's not good. And it's in jeopardy of going to six tonight, right? This yep. is career high. 46. Well, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. That time Tatum knocked it away from him. Ten points already in the opening four minutes and change for number 23. Jody Meeks, the junior. 12 out of 15 from the floor. Well, right now, Kentucky with a 10-point lead on Tennessee, and Tennessee is in trouble. If you're just joining us and you didn't see the first half, we talked about Jody Meeks, the 6'4 junior out of Norcross, Georgia. He's putting on a show like we haven't seen in a couple years now. And surprisingly, he's been more open to start the second half than he was in the first half. Yeah. So you question Tennessee's defense right now. What, what did they, they talk about at halftime? What's the adjustment? I know Bruce Pearl has talked about team guarding Jody Meeks, switching out, making sure two guys are on him, making sure he's doing something off the bounce. And right now, he is a floater and a dangerous guy when a floater is also a shooter, you can ring up big numbers, and that's what Jody Meeks is doing. He's on his way to, he could get 50 in this ball game, the pace he's on, and the way Tennessee is defending him. I was just gonna say, you said that to me during the timeout, I was wondering if you were gonna repeat it for the folks that are watching at home. You said he could get 50, and if they don't find somebody to get out him, he might. He's 10 off his career high, and we still have 16 minutes to play. Just watch him work. I mean, he ha he makes violent, violent cuts to get himself open. That's something that every kid in college basketball can learn a lesson from Jody Meeks. Long three as the shot clock wound down, and he almost hit that one, too. And Patterson, trying to keep it alive, loses it on the sideline over here in front of us. So they, they do get a stop coming out of that timeout. But Meeks took a 26-footer that rimmed out. That would have been his eighth three-pointer of the ballgame. See if Tennessee can find an answer now. And we got a quick foul. Ramon Harris has just picked up his fourth foul. And it didn't take long for Billy Gillespie to send in Darius Miller. Fred, that was an off-the-ball foul in Kentucky. They will challenge you and check you and and get right in your chest as you cut through that lane. And if you fight through that contact, you're also liable to get a foul called against Kentucky, and Tennessee that time did. 
Riley Smith, they battle him. Porter does for the ball on the baseline. And Tennessee will try to inbound again. Prince. Now Tab on the drive. Patterson had the rebound and lost it to Stevenson. Tennessee can't make threes in this game to, to, to extend Kentucky defensively. Oh boy, that's all Kentucky needs is for somebody else to get hot. I should say that's all Tennessee needs is for somebody else other than Jody Meeks to get hot. Kentucky has really improved over the last five or six weeks, which is the M.O. of any Billy Gillespie coach team. He yep. did it at UTEP. He did it at A&M. He will break you down early in fall camp and then build you back as an individual and as a team. And this is what Kentucky is doing once again this year. Remember that second half of last year's yes. conference play? Tatum on a runner. Not a good shot, but the follow by Chisholm off the mark as well. Battle for the rebound, won by, I guess who? You know, you could kind of see this coming from Kentucky when they go to Louisville in that rivalry game, and Sosa has to jump up with a 24-footer or the game goes to overtime. That's the same Louisville team that put it on Notre Dame last night. That tells you Kentucky's not ranked, but they are a very good team. Well, if they're not ranked after this, if this holds up, then I'm not sure I've seen the other 25 teams that are better, I guess. Big collision in the lane as Tatum was going to the rack, and the foul's going to be on Stevenson. I mean, I love that balance. You look at his uh, his balance out here of threes, both right side and left sided as a jump shooter. Then he also takes it inside the three point line and operate on either side of the floor as well. So this is a kid not only ringing up big numbers tonight, but he's showing those NBA scouts. I've got a lot of balance to my offensive game. I make violent cuts. I work hard to get myself open. I can stick it on you if I have a crack. And he works just as hard defensively, which I think separates him from a lot of big-time scores in the college game right now. That program at Norcross, Georgia, Jody was part of what, about four state championships in a row now. I guess they've won. They've had a lot of great players come through there and have filled up ACC and SEC rosters. Kentucky only has one turnover in this game in the not acceptable part of the floor, which is this end of the floor right now against the press. Tyler Smith and J.P. Prince going, what do we do with this guy? I don't know. You want him, you can have him. Well, you know what? Yeah, that's a great point. You almost need to ask in that next time out, does anyone want a piece of Jody Meeks? Raise your hand. Here's two guys. Well, one got a piece of him, but he's going to send him to the free throw line, and that was Josh Tabb with the foul. Coming up tomorrow night, number two, Duke hits the road at Alexander Memorial Coliseum. They'll take out the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech Wednesday night. Hoops presented by Disney Parks on ESPN at 7 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. Mentioned how good Duke is defensively right now. They lead the nation in defensive efficiency. Louisville is number two, Memphis number three, West Virginia four, and Wake Forest is five. And you watch those teams play, and they tells you that they are built to go pretty deep in March. Even Memphis right now, John Calipari visiting with him. He loves Tyreek Evans at the point, and the fact that they are long and they have really bought in defensively. Those are the kind of teams that can go deep in March. Well, Wake Forest proved over the weekend that their start was no fluke. Now that, that, that's size-wise. They're one of the tallest teams in the country. Jeff T is he he's is been a, a man. He, he's hard to guard. If you want to use hard to guard, Jeff Teague in the same sentence as it. Hobson misses a three. And this one is getting away from Tennessee with 13 and a half minutes to play. Now normally they have some big runs in them, which they did on the road against Georgia in the second half on Saturday to win that game. In fact, they want it going away. If they don't have that look, or Kentucky's that much better team than Georgia, it doesn't have that feel right now, I'll tell you that much. And I think 19,000 plus would agree with us. In the past, Tennessee's been really, really tough. Jamar Smith and Lofton, Jamar Smith, oh, those, those kids were really tough. And they, it bothered them to get scored on. And I, I think there's four or five guys for Tennessee right now, not Tyler Smith, he's right. a competitor, that it doesn't really bother them to get scored on like Bruce Pearl wish it would. Here's Miller on a fadeaway. Brian Williams all alone for the rebound. 
14-point game. Tennessee trying to push the action. Brian Williams will try a three. Got it. His third of the year. By the way, his third out of five attempts. So when everybody held their breath, the big guy knows what he can do out there. And that cuts it to 11. Fans are trying to help right now. I would go inside if you're Kentucky on the road right now. Go inside and at least get fouled. If this guy scores, all those defensive cheers are going to be exhausted in a minute. But instead, Chisholm with a steal. Ahead to Tatum. Tatum pushes it up there and almost had a chance for a three-point play. Boy, and Tatum hit the floor hard. A great job by Chisholm as a hedge defender. Look how hard he hedges and keeps his feet alive to avoid Jody Meeks from attacking his hip and getting a foul call. Great footwork by Chisholm as a hedge defender and gives Tennessee a little bit of life into this building. Here's a guy that was the offense last Wednesday in the first half against Gonzaga. Redshirted last year after seven games when he had the knee injury. But he's shown at times that he can really be a shooter. Doesn't prove me that prophetic on that free throw. Tyler Smith comes back in. And Chisholm will get a breather. And this is the important free throw for Tennessee. They have a chance to cut it to, to 10, but get their press set up. Because it's going to stay relentless. And can Kentucky continue to handle that full court pressure? They're only 5 out of 11 from the stripe now. Yep. 5 of 12. They're killing themselves from the free throw line. They are. They're losing points and they're losing opportunities to turn Kentucky over. I would go back inside again if you're Kentucky with a crowd trying to get into it. And great hustle by Tyler Smith, but it comes free to Patterson to Stevenson. And Stevenson missed two. Thompson, nice feed inside of Williams. Throws his shoulder and a hook. Still can't connect. That would have put it down in single digits. Well, maybe Kentucky's going to help with a turnover. They did. Now you've got to make a smart play. That was not it. A little bit ragged by both teams right now. But if you're going to be ragged, you might as well be up by 11 with 11.48 to go. I'm Reese Davis, Sports Center. Right now, what a finish. Memphis beats Tulsa by one. Antonio Anderson at the buzzer for the win. Tigers have won 45 straight, counting conference tournament games in Conference USA. Elsewhere, Scott Pioli leaving the Patriots front office to take over the Chiefs. He'll try to rebuild that once proud program. Much more on that coming up on Sports Center after the game. You can always stay current with ESPN News. All right, Reese, thanks. 11.48 remaining in this one. 58.47. Tennessee's going to have to put a push on here, and they're going to have to slow down Jody Meeks. I figured I'd ask Coach Summit. Pat, court's named after you. Played a lot of good defense. Do something with this guy, would you? <laughs> hey, I tell you, uh, he, he's been outstanding. It's amazing. Um, I, I think what our guys are doing, and, and, and they bring the intensity on the defensive end, and they'll pick it up, and they usually pick it up in the second half. So I expect things to change. You said you just got back from your son Tyler's ball game, and he's a senior. He is, but that's hard to believe. I remember him wow. running around when <laughs> yeah, me too. that me 91 too. banner. I yeah. helped you hang that one, I think, in the national championship. Yeah, absolutely. Did they win the game? Uh, they won their game and uh, played pretty well, so really, really happy for him. You and I spent a lot of time together covering the WNBA, and I've picked your brain a lot about basketball, but reflect right now. I know you're a few wins away from a thousand. What, what will that mean to you? And, and as you look back, why have you accomplished that? How have you done it? Well, you know this, Jimmy, you win in life with people yep. and we have recruited. If you look at the history of the game, we have more All-Americans, more Olympians than any program in the country. And it's, it's all about having players. I, yep. I've said I have never scored a basket for the <laughs> University of Tennessee. I have zero points and we have eight championships. Go figure. It's all about players. Is there one of those eight that means more than the others or is it just always the next one means the most to you? No, Brad, they're all so special. And 
you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's about having a family, and, and our, our, our Lady Ball family is obviously very extended, and we just had a lot of great teams, and had a lot of teams that didn't win, but to, to have eight is really special. You know, the cabbie today uh, said to me, he said, who's playing tonight? And I, I said, Kentucky and Tennessee. And he said, I didn't think the ladies were playing tonight. And I said, no, it's a no. men's team. <laughs> I mean, around here, you say, now Bruce has kind of changed that or helped uh, that it could be either the men or the women. But you set the tone for that with people saying that type of thing. Well, the great news is that we have two great basketball programs and this community and, and really this whole state and all, all the volunteer and Lady Ball fans, they've just embraced both teams, which is, you know, th to me, uh, th that's the most special thing we have going here. One of the things I admire about you, the winningest coach in the history of the game, but you continue to learn and absorb and ask questions. Bruce Pearl has told me what he's learned from you. What have you learned from Bruce Pearl? Well, I've learned a lot from Bruce about the game. Uh, obviously, he's got a great offensive mind. I've also learned a lot from a defensive standpoint. He's willing to, to make adjustments and changes, and the scouting report defense to Bruce, just like it is to us, is very, very important. And I know there's a lot of times when things aren't going well, I'm calling Bruce. Well, from the PR standpoint, when you put on the cheerleading gear, and I was there that night, almost like when uh, Bruce was part of your cheering crew when he <laughs> had the chest painted in that famous picture. Well, you know, I don't know if we're going to vote on who, uh, who had the best day. You had the pom-poms going. I saw you. It was good. Uh, I, I tell you, that, uh, that really changed things around here yeah. because I think people always see me as being the most serious coach ever. And believe you me, you can't do it 35 years and not have fun doing it. You just came from watching your son play high school basketball. Now, I know Coach Pearl back in the day got tossed out of a game watching his son play. Do you get that emotionally attached to a ball game yourself and your own you know, it's interesting. out there? Uh, I, I try not to. Uh, I, I think I sit and you know, obviously I'm shaking my foot and, you know, I'm coaching on the inside. But outwardly, I just want Tyler to listen to his coach and do what he needs to do. And, you know, Bruce gets a little more involved than I do. <laughs> Here's a feed to Stevenson off the glass with the shot clock winding down. Tennessee played good defense till the last two seconds. And Stevenson finished it off. I was wondering if when the refs see you coming to Tyler's games, they go, oh, my God, here she comes. You know, Brett, I, I, don't, I don't say anything <laughs> because nothing good was going to happen. That's you know? true. <laughs> You'd hate to get a tee at one of your kids' games. Stevenson flushes a second one. And now at 945, it's up to 15 again. Coach, if you're playing in a ball game and, and one of the one of the kids you're playing against has 38 points on, what would you say in your timeout? Maybe well, no not touch. about X's and O's. He's you know a no-touch player. He cannot touch the basketball, and you know I think that that's hard to do sometimes when they set screens and obviously that's the priority is to get their best player open and get them get them a lot of shots. Yep. But um, you know I've been in games like that and it's just face guard the whole way and. And that has to be number one priority. Coach, we're going to put your schedule up. I think the guys in the truck have got what's coming up for you between now and the end of January after Brian Williams tries to hit a free throw here as he's missed his last three and he's missed his last four. Here's, hey, here's how it looks. You're going to ruin my night. Well, <laughs> i got to go to Mississippi State. I watched them today. They're, it's maybe the, one of the best teams that Sharon Fanning's had. And, you know, she does a great job. Her teams play really hard. Fortunately, we're back home on Sunday to play South Carolina. And then we're on the road again. Arkansas and Auburn are tough. Um, we just have to take it one game at a time. If you could hit five straight, it would be that old Miss game here on ESPNU. And if not, maybe the game after that, which is uh, a big Monday game on ESPN2. Coach, uh, full court pressure here coming. You probably want to just go and watch a little bit of this game as Tatum trying to tip it in. Kentucky with a rebound. Coach, we'll just wish you the best of luck. Obviously, Jimmy and I and everybody, not just in college basketball, but in sports, period, have watched you, and we're convinced you could coach any sport, any time, yes. and you would be as successful as well, you have Well, thank you. You're very kind. Thanks for having me on. I threw your name out there when the Tennessee football job came open this year. <laughs> By the way, Lane Kiffin, Lane Kiffin and his wife had a baby tonight. Oh, hey, right. So congratulations, congratulations to Awesome, that. awesome. Thank coach, you both. Thanks. Good great, to see you, Coach. Great to see you. Thanks a lot, Pat. One of the best, if not the best, there's ever been at what she does and at what we watch on a weekly basis.
And we thank Pat Summit for being with us. The court here named after her. And you look at the most coaching wins all time in basketball history. Lenny Wilkins, Don Nelson, Pat Riley, Jerry Sloan, Larry Bryant, Phil Jackson, all in the NBA. And then Pat Summit, the only one, and closing in on that magical thousand. That is incredible. And look at the national titles, and she talked about it. Eight of them over there on the right-hand side. Can't do much uh, better than that. Brad, she's class. She's tough, and she is class. Every day. Now a 13-point game here. Bruce Pearl is hoping for some summit-like magic from his men's team. Well, Kentucky's spacing. Rob Knight talked about Duke's half-court spacing in their offense. In the prior to our ball game, Kentucky's spacing in their how they've attacked Tennessee's pressure has been terrific. They have played together and they have played tough. Two things you must do when you try to win on the road. And Meeks is bumped and stuck one in the rim. Well, he's stuck a lot of them tonight. <laughs> None more effectively than that one. <laughs> that just pretty much wraps up Jody Meeks' night, I guess. Hey Brad, a, a lot of conversation already, and, and I enjoy taking part of it too. And, National Player of the Year, certainly Tyler Hansbrough and Steph Curry and Blake Griffin. Griffin maybe has a little bit of an edge right now. He break down his entire game. I'm not in love with him defensively. But certainly Luke Herringo, I mean, that's a guy that's had nine straight 20-point games. James Harden out of Arizona State, I think as well-rounded as there is in the game. And, and this kid, although he's not on a ranked team and he hasn't been on national TV enough, he's ringing up huge numbers. He's the number five scorer in the country. Billy Gillespie will say he's my best defender on a guy that absolutely stands for defense, and he is wreaking havoc in Tennessee tonight. He's got 40. <laughs> Enough said, huh? Man. What Pat say, he's a no-touch player yeah. right now. That, yeah. That's the only way you can take him and slow him down. The only problem is nobody's been able to touch him. He's blown by everybody. Yeah. Patterson picks up his second. Jody Meeks getting a breather with eight and a half minutes to play in the ball game. He doesn't guard himself. A lot of guys in college, they guard themselves. They stand, they get stationary. He's in constant motion with different speeds, working his way off of those screens. He has a great flow to the game. And Chisholm for the free throw. That's Wayne's first point of, I think it's point. That's his seventh point of the second half. First free throw of this half. By the way, I mentioned Lane and Layla Kiffin, baby boy tonight. Eight pounds, eight ounces, 21 inches long. That's at least a linebacker, Monty Knox. So Monty, Lane's dad, longtime defensive coordinator of the Buccaneers and the Vikings, and now coming here to Knoxville, and I assume the Knox is for half of Knoxville. So that's how you ingratiate yourself to the hometown fans right off the bat. You know, put a little Knoxville in the kid's name. I like it. Congratulations, Lane. He should get a contract extension right now uh, before he ever coaches. I think that's going okay for him right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a turnover by Kentucky. His quarter was a little bit out of control. But, Brad, their turnovers have been in the okay area of the floor tonight in Billy Gillespie's mind. They have not been in the backcourt, that unacceptable part of the floor. Another reason why Kentucky has that 68-55 to 55 lead. Tennessee could just get a little bit of a game breaker here. Three pointer from yeah. an unexpected source, maybe a slam dunk, and an old fashioned three. Somebody going to the free throw line, get it down to 10. They know the crowd is waiting to help them out. There's over 19,000 in here tonight. We talk about surround sound defense on Chisholm when he catches it. Look at that. Hobson all the way to the rack. Strong move by the freshman. He's fouled by Patterson. That's three on Patterson. You know what I like about Kentucky's defense, Brad, also, I talked about how they full body help, but they don't help when they're not supposed to. They help when they are supposed to. Yeah. And right now, look at Wayne Chisholm. Just that surround sound defense. The four blue jerseys go to him and then quickly back to their guy. Scotty Hobson is a Kentucky native as Jody Meeks checks back in. Hobson from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. First McDonald's All-American from Kentucky to play for Tennessee since Allen Houston. And he got them both. 
His first two points in the second half. And there's Jeanette. Scotty's mom in the crowd looking on. Her baby boy hits a couple of free throws. Crowd is trying with eight minutes remaining in the ballgame. Here's Gillespie Trust to bring it up against that pressure. Jody Meeks. He just does so many things for this Wildcat team. Plus, he wants him at the free throw line if they're going to guard him closely. And they try here. And he got the shot away, and it's short. One of the few times tonight he hasn't been on the mark. Tyler Smith can get it to single digits. If he scores from the free throw line when we come back, we'll have to wait on that. Stevenson picks up his fourth foul. Tennessee within striking distance, down 11. Kentucky trying to pick up its 13th win of the year. They lead by 11, 740 remaining in the half. Jimmy, you thought that the pressure of Tennessee and the turnovers they'd force would be an issue tonight. Not bad, though, when you look at the way you've got that screen covered. Exactly. Right here is the area that you have to stay away from when you play Tennessee. Kentucky has only turned it over two times in the not acceptable area of the floor. Twice right here in the bad area of the floor, but Kentucky has scrambled to get their defense set. The majority of Kentucky's turnovers, Brad, have come down here when they're in the half-court situation. So for Billy Gillespie, you don't like the eight, but you like where they came from because Kentucky has been able to get their defense set when they've had their majority of their turnovers in this game. That's another big reason why Kentucky has the lead. And some of those eights down there on the acceptable end, as you would say, were offensive fouls. Yes. So now at the free throw line, Tyler Smith. He's three for three tonight. Tyler's got 15. And we heard the guys at half. Jay and Hubert talking about the SEC and no, no ranked team. And you know, you can obviously make a case for Kentucky and Tennessee and Arkansas right now. I mean, you could you could slide them into that 20 through 25 slot and knock out those teams, and no one would know the difference. Remember when I said single digits would be something Tennessee could live with at the eight-minute mark? Well, they're only 20 seconds off from that. Now they need some stops. Will Billy Gillespie try to go to Patrick Patterson on the inside of the floor? Miller, a lot of dribbling against Woolwich. Ten on the shot clock as Porter holds it. Trying to blow by Hobson. Hooks it out to Meeks for three. Got it! Wow! 43 for Jody Meeks. Play good defense all that way. And then bang right from straight away on the top of the key. Watch him come across here. In a bull rush mode, he comes from one side of the floor to the other. Again, he makes violent cuts. He understands the shot clock's winding down. I have to get myself open, and he just did. And Stevenson has fouled out with six points and 6.57 to go. So one of the big guys inside whose long arms have raised havoc against Tennessee over the course of the last couple of seasons, I guess, especially when Tyler Smith is in there and he's guarding him, has fouled out. Now that might be a key yet, and Tyler Smith's back at the free throw line. But it's not going to matter until somebody throws a bucket of ice on number 23. What's going to happen in this game? <laughs> he has the look in his eyes that says, I ain't done yet. Nope. And you better guard me or I'm going to go for 50. Well, Tyler Smith's doing his job. Seven straight free throws, five for five in this half. Ten-point game, 6.57. Now they can set up their press again. Got a hurry, threw it away. And that's the third turnover now in the unacceptable part of the floor in Billy Gillespie's mind. It cannot go much higher than four in this ball game. Back comes into Tyler Smith. He's going to try to start doing this himself. Chisholm cleans up and one. And now Patterson's got four, Jimmy. 
Stevenson's gone. Patterson with four fouls and Chisholm going to the free throw line. And a chance for a three-point play. Remember early in the game when the best shot for Tennessee was an offensive rebound? Well, the remaining 6.52 of this game, it might become their best shot again. Fans are loving it. The Volunteers are back in it. Down eight, they can make it seven when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by KFC. It's a flavor blitz. KFC's honey barbecue wings have three layers of flavor. And in part by Chevy, an American revolution. Might be a little bit of ice on the edges of the Tennessee River out there tonight. It's cool. Lakers and Spurs tomorrow night, Wednesday night. Hoops on ESPN. Kobe Bryant, the Lakers, take out Tim Duncan. And the Spurs, NBA Wednesday on ESPN and also on ESPN360.com. 20,474 watching along with Jimmy Dykes, Janine Edwards, and yours truly, Brad Nessler, Thompson Bowling Arena. As it looked like it was a cold night outside and all for naught inside when it was 64 to 49, a 15 point lead by Kentucky. But Tennessee has scrapped and fought their way back to within eight. Wayne Chisholm, who has 10 points this half and 15 for the game, can cut it to seven if he hits the free throw. Brad, for, I'm sorry, forget about Ken Kentucky and Tennessee not being ranked. This is still Kentucky versus Tennessee. And when Bruce Pearl got the job, he said, we're going after Kentucky. He puts the orange blazer on again tonight, and they'll do it again next Tuesday. And the Volunteers are right back in this game. The orange blazer only for Kentucky and Vanderbilt. So you'll see it again next Tuesday on Super Tuesday. Presented by KFC from Nashville. Here's the man of the last two hours, Jody Meeks. See if they can keep it out of his hands. Harris to Miller with seven on the shot clock. Miller, he might have to put it up. He will. Didn't get it. Patterson kept it alive. The hook shot doesn't go. Rebound. A walk on Miller. Seven could become five or four this trip. Got Thompson on the floor that can knock down a three. Tyler Smith capable of knocking down a three. And I would go to Chisholm. Patterson has four fouls on him, correct? And Wayne Chisholm now floats to the perimeter. I'd run him inside. Thompson, here's Chisholm from the outside. Rebound is Kentucky's Harris. That's not the shot Bruce Pearl won. Uh -uh. Wayne Chisholm has a, a guy with four fouls on him, and Chisholm floats to the perimeter. Bobby Mays caught pulling a jersey. Picks up his third. You know what? Bruce Pearl is going to take Chisholm out and tell him what you and I just discussed for the last 15 or 20 seconds. We've got him on the ropes. We've got Patterson with four fouls. Get inside and see if he can guard you. And he puts Brian Williams in, big number 33 in white, and I expect the ball to maybe go to Williams the next time Tennessee gets Meeks. Wow. Got another three. Wow. That's nine. Tying his own school record. 46 ties his own career high. Wow. And now Tatum throws it right into Jody Meeks' hands. You have to be tough enough to not turn that ball over with a game on the line and just over five minutes to go on your home floor. That was a toughness play or lack of by Cameron Tatum. The next point, number 23 scores, is the best he's ever done. There it goes. And there it goes. School record, 10 threes. 49 points for Jody Meeks. Partner, he's not done. He is not done. That basket right now looks about three times its normal size to Jody Meeks. 
77-64. Forget watching Kobe Bryant tomorrow night. Watch Jody Meeks right now. No offense, Kobe, if you're watching. Well, there is probably 20 NBA scouts here. And he's fouled. He's going to the free throw line for three. You called it way back in the first half. You said he can go for 50. He can go for 52 if he just hits these free throws. They have not been able to no touch Jody Meeks in this ball game, Brad. Time and time again, he got off early, and Tennessee was challenging the shot early, but it's not enough. You have to make him give that ball up, double team him, get it out of his hands, make him do something off the bounce. 50 points, Jody Meeks. Wow. 50 points, Jody Meeks. Now the sixth guy this year to go for a career high against Tennessee. Look at this kid. 51. 52 is coming up. Dan Issel's Kentucky single game scoring mark now in jeopardy. Never thought I'd ever say that. I'm going to tell you what he has just done. He has put himself in the conversation for National Player of the Year. I'm not saying he's going to get it, but when you start throwing out the names now of Heron Goatee and Hansbro and Curry and Griffin and Harden, you have to throw Jody Meeks in there. He came in averaging 25, and he's a terrific defender. He gets a breather with 52 points. Tennessee trying to tip it in. They've had to work for everything. And Mays finally with another chance on the baseline scores. It's almost like Jody Meeks, though, with the 52 points, has hit Tennessee in the gut. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You just don't have the feeling that they have that fight in them to come back because of what Meeks has done to them. There's some good hustle by Prince and Tatum and Mays just to get to the floor. <laughs> wow. School record right there. On pace for the all-time Kentucky scoring single game record still to come. Eighty sixty six Kentucky three thirty two remaining in the ball game. That means you've got three and a half minutes left to watch one of the all time great scoring performances in college basketball history. Brad is the single best performance this year in college basketball. I think Steph Curry had it when he hung 44 on Oklahoma. He just got trumped tonight by Jody Meeks hanging over 50 on the visiting floor against Tennessee in a monster matchup, a conference matchup, an important ball game, a lot of pressure, a lot of things at stake. No, you didn't, Jody Meeks. Yes, you did. Wow. I don't know that if... The Big Blue Faithful ever thought somebody would say that Dan Issel's 53 points against Ole Miss February 7th of 1970 would ever be pushed. And for a guy that averaged 8.8 .8 points a game last year in an injury-riddled season, certainly we didn't think Jody Meeks would be the guy we'd be saying that. But now the way he's played all year, there's a lot more 30-point games, I think, in Jody Meeks this year. Yeah, there I don't is. know if there's a lot more 50-point games, but he's somebody that everybody's going to have to watch out for now. His next point ties the school record. His next field goal or two free throws breaks a Kentucky record. Here it goes. Off the mark. Would have been his 11th three-pointer. Had it gone. I like the decision. You're up 14, trying to milk a lead with three minutes to go. Normally, you pound that thing inside. Not in this ball game. No. You get Jody Meeks open for a three. <laughs> Tennessee has tried to face guard him. They've tried to switch out. They haven't done a good job of doubling him up. But Bruce Pearl has thrown everything he can. And at some point, it goes on the shoulders of those Tennessee players that says enough is enough is enough. We're not going to take this anymore. And, and they have not had that guy step up or a group of guys step up right. to stop it. Not that there haven't been some contested shots right. in Meeks' night by any stretch of the imagination, but wow. Three minutes left in Knoxville. 82-66.
Mays will try three. Chisholm cleans up. Wayne Chisholm has had the best game for Tennessee in this half, if not overall on the night. He's done a pretty good job on Patterson, too. Here he is as Miller hangs in the air and delivers. And, and that play all started, Brad, with Jody Meeks. He was double teamed in the corner, but he used a back dribble, got a little separation, threw a 45-degree pass, and it results in a layup on the other end. He has scored 52 points in this game, but he has affected it in so many other areas. Absolutely. Played great defense. Come up with some steals that were timely. Just when it appeared Tennessee was going to get back in it, he had a big steal that took away their momentum. Six or seven rebounds. Tyler Smith. Here's Meeks. There's another rebound. Just as you were saying it. He is a pro's pro tonight in this game. You know, you talked about his balance, where he shoots from. Yeah. How, about, how about 26 each half so far? That's pretty nice it's balance, a, too. I'm thinking back to Chris Heron back at Fresno State had some games like that and we covered him. Faden had a huge game last year. Yeah. This is numero uno as I look back. Mays on the outside, just inside the three-point line. Well, I think this is my, I'm not quite sure, I'd have to look back. It's either my 17th or 18th year at ESPN, and this is the best performance I've ever seen by one guy. We've seen some good ones. How do you argue with 52? Right, well, there's no argument. How did he go to the free throw line? How do you argue with 52, and how do you argue with the 25 points a game he was averaging coming in. They've played the likes of Kansas State, West Virginia, Miami, Tom Crean's team in Indiana will guard you, Louisville, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, you know, they're one of the top 12 teams in the country as far as field goal percentage defense. There he ties the school record of 53 points in a single game. If you were there on February 7th in 1970, Dan Issel, who is more than a legend in Kentucky and in his professional basketball career. You just saw history again tonight. 54 points. Write it down. January 13th, 2009 belongs to Jody Meeks. A new record in the history, in the illustrious basketball history of Kentucky. There's a new number one. And Ramon Harris throws one down for an exclamation point with 65 seconds left in what is soon to be about a 20-point win for Kentucky on Tennessee's home floor, where a 16-game home SEC winning streak will go by the boards, much like a 37-game winning streak went by the boards last week. Well... We had to vote on the Liberty Mutual <laughs> player of the game. <laughs> I think it was unanimous, wasn't it? Yeah. I think the 20,474 in here voted with us. They would. Congratulations, Jody Meeks. And wow is all we can say, I guess. He played the speed he wanted to play every time on offense. Just imagine a guy bringing up those big numbers. He never forced a shot in no, this he game. Didn't. He played to the rhythm that he wanted to play. There's nothing Tennessee could do about it. The only time he even took a shot where you said that probably wouldn't be the first choice was when the shot clock was yes. down to two and somebody just tapped it out to him. Yep. Well, Jody Meeks, I'm going to welcome you to the club of yeah. potential players of the year in college basketball right now. I'd say he has to be, Brad. His numbers back it up. Luke Karen Goody, Hansborough, Curry, Griffin, James Harden, and Jody Meeks to the list that should be in that conversation as of tonight. I think the ball should be rightfully in his hands at the end of the game. Take that one home with you, Jody. 54 points. Now he's getting mobbed by his teammates. Kentucky school record for a single game performance. And what a performance it was. 90 to 72 and 54 of those 90 belong to that guy. You know what says a lot about Jody Meeks? How happy his teammates are for him tonight. That speaks volumes about the kind of person Jody Meeks is. Let's check in with Janine. A record-setting night for Jody Meeks. Jody, 
Why were you able to read this Tennessee defense so well? What were you seeing out there? I just give credit to my teammates for finding me on, on the wing wide open. And Coach Staff did a great job giving us a pair. This is great. I'm speechless right now. You have to be speechless. I mean, you were just in a zone about halfway through the game. What were you thinking? What was going through your mind? You had 30-something points at that point. I was just thinking, no matter what, I wanted to win this game. And, uh, my first two years, I never won here, and I wanted to get the win tonight. And just, I'm all about winning. You're in the company of Dan Issel, one of the all-time greats. How does that make you feel? Uh, it's great. Uh, you know, it's kind of... It's kind of mind-boggling to me to be in the same, you know, sense as those kind of Kentucky legends. But, you know, I'm just happy to be in the same sense as them. Congratulations on a record-setting performance. Isn't it amazing that the, one of the first things he said was, the only thing I was worried about is I never got a win here. I want to get yeah. a win here. I don't think he was worried about getting any kind of scoring records tonight, was it? No, but you talk about the numbers he put up. But I go back to how happy his teammates were for him and then his comments about making sure we get the win. He is a terrific kid. And he put on a performance of all performances, one that we will never forget. And he, Brad, he has to be in the conversation, at least, for National Player of the Year. Now, he came in the number five scorer of the nation. And he's going to raise that average without a doubt. So what a super Tuesday it was. 90-72, the final. Kentucky goes to 13-4, and 2-0, and at the head of the class in the SEC East. Scott Van Pelt, Neil Everett, and the Sports Center guys are standing by. We're going to be back here at Thompson Bowling Arena. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.